I'm MJ with iFixit, and today we're going to take a look at the inside of Apple's latest iteration of the iPod Touch and see how it stacks up in terms of repairability in our fifth generation iPod Touch teardown review. Without any sort of fanfare whatsoever, Apple released the fifth generation iPod Touch yesterday. So we hurried on over to our local Apple store and picked one up as quick as our little feet would carry us. And as much as I did want to simply admire its prettiness, our iPod Touch went straight to the teardown table. I've got to admit, we had high hopes for this iPod in terms of repairability, considering that the iPhone 5 is the most repairable iPhone yet. But before I get ahead of myself, let's take a look at the major exterior changes that were made. The biggest change that was made was the increased display size. Just like the iPhone 5, it has a 4-inch retina display. While the length of the iPod has increased somewhat to handle the larger screen, this thing is still remarkably thin, coming in at just shy of a quarter of an inch. Unfortunately, the oohs and ahs stop right there. Once we tried opening the iPod, we were hugely disappointed. Instead of choosing an easily openable and therefore more easily repairable design the way they did with the iPhone 5, Apple chose to glue the iPod shut. Gluing the iPod shut puts users in a real pickle if they ever want to replace the battery, which Apple says will hold up to 80% of its capacity up to 400 charging cycles. After that, good luck swapping the battery out. We had to resort to using a heat gun just to get the front panel off. And if you have to use a heat gun just to get inside, you know that there have been some sacrifices made in terms of repairability. Not only do you risk damaging sensitive components while trying to soften the adhesive, but it also makes things more complicated when reassembling the device. That all being said, we eventually did make it past the adhesive, but it was at this point that we felt like Apple was playing a cruel joke on us. Not only do we have to worry about adhesive when removing the front panel, but there's also retaining clips. In the past, we've seen retaining clips used instead of adhesive, but to use both is just plain spiteful. Once we finally got the front panel pried up, we were able to get our first glimpse inside the fifth generation iPod Touch, which actually wasn't all that interesting considering the giant EMI shield in the way. But after a few screws, we were able to see that like all other iOS devices, the battery takes up the majority of the case. And sadly, to get at the other components, we had to pull off the soldered battery connections. And you can chalk soldered battery connections up to yet another ding in the iPod Touch's repairability score. This battery comes in at 1,030 milliamp hours, which is an upgrade from the previous generation's 930 milliamp hours, and according to Apple, will provide you with 40 hours of music playback between charges. Our next step was to peel the ribbon cable that's responsible for the volume buttons, microphone, LED flash, and power cable up from the rear case. Combining all of these components into a single ribbon cable is cost effective from a manufacturing standpoint, but detrimental to consumers looking to replace an individual component. Our next discovery was made when we removed the home button. We praised Apple in our iPhone 5 teardown for designing a stronger home button, but it appears in this iteration of the iPod Touch, they're using a weaker rubber membrane design. Similar to the all-in-one ribbon cable that I mentioned earlier, we also discovered that the lightning connector, headphone jack, and microphone share a similar design, and that that cable is soldered to the logic board. So unless you are an expert solderer, if your headphone jack goes out, you're going to have to replace the entire logic board. And on that note, it's time to talk repairability. We score every gadget we tear down for repairability on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The fifth generation iPod Touch scored a disappointing 3 out of 10, and here's why. Many of the components are soldered together, requiring either a very difficult or a very expensive repair if any individual parts break. The iPod Touch has no external screws. Instead, a combination of clips and adhesive make it difficult to open the case. Some of the cables connected to the logic board run over the top and connect on the bottom, making it difficult to remove the board or disconnect the cables, increasing the chances that you'll damage something during repair. That about wraps up our teardown review. As always, if you want to see the complete teardown, including high-resolution images, you can find that on ifixit.com. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest teardowns and repair videos, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit or like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.